Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So many Christians are the walking wounded. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and God came and lived inside of you, something amazing happened. You became a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are born again. God, by his spirit, literally dwells inside of you. And you are walking around and encapsulating the very King of kings and the Lord of lords by his spirit. Your spirit, man, cannot get any better than the moment you are born again. But how many of you know you got a soul? Your intellect, your emotions, and your will. Your soulish man, or as the scripture calls it, the flesh. The flesh needs renovation. The flesh needs our lives to be restored and renewed. That is where our emotions are located, inside of our soulish man. And God wants us to realize that, yes, you can't get any better. Listen, if Jesus is living inside of you, you are born again. You are blood washed. And by God, you are going to see him in the soon by and by. Can I hear an amen? But you're not there yet. And because you're not there yet, the struggle of Christianity is not that we, is, the struggle of Christianity is not the devil. He's already been defeated. The struggle of Christianity is ourselves. We are the struggle that we deal with. We are the ones that hold us back from God's blessings. We are the ones that struggle. The problem is not God. The problem is not Christianity. The problem is usually right inside our soulish man. This is the year of, if we're going to love people, we first have to realize we've got to love ourselves. And that means we need healing in our hearts. We need God to come in and start doing a restoration process. The Bible declares in the book of James chapter 1 that you receive the engrafted word of God that will save your soul. The word save there is sozo in the Greek. It means to reupholster, renew, restore. So many of us are walking around with Jesus, hallelujah, but yet we're walking around with so much baggage and so much weight and so much in our soulish man that if we don't get set free, we'll never truly love other people and the church will remain insignificant. There's a necessity that we have God restore us and renew us in our soulish man. Wounds are the devil's main tool. Wounds and offenses are the devil's main tool to get you out of the battle. Say it again. Wounds and offenses are the devil's main tools in our lives as Christians to pull us out of the battle. How many here have ever been offended before? You just offended. People are so easily offended these days. Why? Really? The problem that most people are offended so easily is because inside they have a low self-esteem. They don't have confidence in who God has made them to be. They're struggling with who and accepting themselves for who God has called them to be and what God has in their lives. So therefore what occurs is when somebody does something that offends their emotions, they get ticked off, they get mad, they get offended, and they get hurt feelings, and they get pulled out of the race. Listen. In wartime, the great tactic uh, when you're in a, in a battle is really not to kill people. The greatest thing you can do in battle is wound people. If you kill a person in war, you've taken one out of the battle. But if you wound one in war, you've taken at least two to three out of the battle. Because somebody's got to get them off the battlefield. The devil in his wisdom is not running around with a little red suit and a pitchfork with a long tail, but he's running around with an understanding that the more Christians that I can get wounded in their hearts, the more Christians that I can get offended, the more Christians that I pull off the battlefield, the more people that will now have no significant value in the battle for souls. I, I thought we were a Pentecostal church. 
You see, I believe that the more people that are wounded, and if you are offended this morning, it shows an issue in your heart. There's two things that we've got to deal with. Number one, a broken heart or wounds. How many of you know that? How many of you have been wounded? Somebody's betrayed you. Somebody's uh, turned against you. Somebody that you've loved, you know, has said bad things behind your back. You know, we've all been wounded. <laughs> so a lot of people say, well, I can't go to church anymore. I've been wounded. Hello. That's, of course you went to church and got wounded. What do you mean? I went to church to get healed up. No, you went to church to get wounded. That doesn't even make sense. Oh, yes, it does. Because what is church? A group of imperfect people coming together to be one. Which means you will be wounded. Somebody's going to say something. Listen, it won't take you long here. Somebody's going to offend you. Somebody's going to tick you off. Someone's going to hurt your feelings. You will be in a position where you are going to have your emotions rocked. Well, why? Because, listen, if you never get offended, you will never learn how to work through offense. If your heart is never wounded, then you will never realize the healing power of Jesus Christ. We always look at the negative. Oh, my goodness. You wouldn't believe what happened to me in church the other day. I came to church just wanting to worship God, and somebody, you wouldn't believe what they did. Somebody did it to me. I just couldn't believe they, they I went to shake their hand, and they turned around and walked away. And it was the pastor. I'm never going back to that church again. You're an idiot. Oh, did I offend you? I'm sorry. Here's the problem. And that the problem isn't that someone didn't shake your hand. The problem is that you're oversensitive because you've never been healed from the wounds of the past. And it's time to get healed up so that you can learn to love yourself, so you can learn to get out there and to love other people. Because the more we love God, the more we understand who we are, the more we walk in the love and, and understand how God loves us and that we love ourselves, the more we're going to be able to give to other people who are in need rather than constantly protect ourselves, constantly shelter ourselves, constantly recoil because we're afraid to become vulnerable. Am I preaching to myself right now? Come on now. The Bible says that the broken heart is so powerful because, Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when desire comes, it is a tree of life. There are people in this church that are, you're mad at God. You're mad at God. You didn't get the answer you wanted, and you're mad at God. You're holding God captive. Well, God, if you really love me, boom. Well, you know what? What we don't realize is that sometimes some of the things we ask, we ask God for, if he actually gave them to us, we destroy ourselves. Sometimes we're dealing with timing. We give up before the manifestation comes. Some people have been brokenhearted by your mothers and your fathers. Maybe you didn't have them, or maybe they, they, they told you you were, you were a loser, or they didn't want you. And we knew one young man. His mom, I think he was 18 or 19 years old, and his mom actually looked at him and said, I wish you were never born. I never wanted you in the first place, and this is all the trouble you give me. Oh, yeah. How many people do, may, people in this room right now, your mothers or your fathers might have abandoned you. Those are wounds in our hearts that need to be healed. No, I'm not talking we got to go back and get in our fetal position and go through amazing counseling that costs $125 an hour. I'm saying you can go to the great counselor. His name is Jesus. And Jesus came according to Luke chapter 4. He came to heal the broken heart. God wants to heal your heart. He wants to restore those wounds. He, listen now. I, you've, give, you've heard me give the example before, but I was really kind of stupid when I was in third, uh, third uh, I think I was in fourth grade, maybe fourth grade, and I decided to whittle backwards with my father's utility knife. 
Yeah, I didn't say I was intelligent. And so I'm whittling away, and it slipped. Now, utility knife is a razor blade. And it went all the way down to the bone. I'm talking like I could open it up and see the stuff moving on the inside. There was no blood either. I mean, it was such an amazing cut. There was no blood. So I went to my dad, and I said, I think I, think I did something bad. They took me to the hospital. They put in three stitches. Well, it was time. I was a basketball player. I was point. And... Uh, I am offended. <laughs> and here I am, uh, uh, it, I've been out of the game, you know? And it was time to take the, the stitches out, so my, my dad said, we don't need to go to the doctors, I can do that myself. So he cut the stitches out, put my finger in, a, uh, in nothing. So I went out that night, turned around, and bumped the kid, and on the courts, the flesh literally tore apart, and blood started spurting all over the court. I'm talking like, you know, like the first time there was no blood, you could open up and see the body. No, no, this was ripped. My flesh tore. So they grabbed rags and everything like that, and I looked at my dad. I said, do I need to go back? Oh, no, he says, we'll just... We'll butterfly the thing and put a popsicle stick on the end of it. So I can, I can describe that entire experience. And watch. I can show you the scar. I will never forget the experience, how I was broken, how I was wounded. I can look down and I will see the scar, but watch. I'm touching it, and it doesn't hurt anymore. God wants to get you the place that those wounds of the past that you've had, you won't ever forget them, but that when they're touched, they don't hurt anymore. That is God's plan. Some of you have been offended. Well, let me tell you. Someone's disappointed you, they've done something to you, they said something to you. I'm trying to keep to my notes so this way I don't preach for four hours and 15 minutes. Offenses are amazing. Uh, can I just tell you something never to say to me? I'm just going to tell you. You should never come up to me and say, I'm a lifer at His Tabernacle Family Church because I know you're soon leaving. Anybody who's ever come up and say, I'm a lifer. It's not long. They're out the door. Why? Because now they become a target. And it's not long until they get offended. You know, offenses are amazing because most times that people are offended, it's, it's not even on purpose. People don't mean, listen, if they're that mean, they need to get saved. It's very rare, and you know, I've been doing this 25 years. It's very rare that you find somebody that says, I'm going to get them. I'm going to do everything I can to destroy them, man. I got them now. I'm plotting and planning. Most offenses are somebody does something and they didn't even know they did it. And it offended you. Well, can't believe And you might not even say it out loud. You might not even distort your face. But immediately, inside, it's like, Wah! and there's a disdain and a distaste and a disgust. Now, let me be real with you. You are going to be offended. You are going to have your feelings hurt. The problem is not the problem. It's what you do with the problem. The moment that your feelings are hurt, the moment that you have been offended, that very moment there's a choice to be made. Am I going to allow this to seat in my soul? Am I going to allow this to do what the Bible calls calling it a root of bitterness? 
you ever try to dig up an, an older tree? An older tree. A tree that's old. I've done that. You know, I, I've been told at times that yeah, you need to remove a bush. Anybody ever try to remove a bush? They're horrible, man. So you get out there and you get a shovel. And you start shoveling. And then you hit the roots. Man, they're stinking thick, aren't they? And they're everywhere. And all of a sudden, you're, you can't even use a shovel anymore. You've got to go get an axe. Or a chainsaw with a bad blade that you know you're going to throw away later. I have a few of those. And you got to get down there, and it takes work to cut out that root. Well, let me tell you something. When you and I, as Christians, do not catch a, an offense early and eradicate it from our lives, if we are a grudge holder, if we are a grudge holder, if we are a person that holds a grudge, then what will occur is we, it doesn't, and no, no tree starts off as a tree. It's always a seed. And all of a sudden, that seed starts to grow. Oh, come on. You know what I'm talking about? You know, come on now. Watch. You're fine. But then they walked into the room. You might be plotting to beat them. You might be plotting to kill them. You might be plotting, I got to get out of here. You know, I've had people say to me, I can't come to your church anymore. I said, what? That's, what do you mean? Well, you know, I was dating so-and-so, and we broke up. I said, that's stupid. I said, that's just stupid. I said, what are you going to do when you get to heaven? Tell them to go to the other side? Oh, by the way, you're not going to make it. Because the Bible says if you don't forgive, you won't be. Ooh, we don't like that scripture. You offended me with that scripture. Good, that's the kind of offense you really need. And if I had offense, I'd hit you with it too. Offense, get it? No, I should move on. People that are offended are always, I, I, I guess I'm just the type of person that has chosen, and, and really you have to choose this. Uh, if you've been in ministry for any short period of time, I didn't say long, any short period of time, you've realized how quickly the people that love you today can hate you quickly tomorrow. Yes. The people that are for you now will turn against you tomorrow. This is just part of ministry. And it's not a part we like to talk about, but it is very true. Jesus had it, by the way. I'm going to write a book on the staff of Jesus. They have messed up people. Come on now. His staff was messed up. And even in Jesus' staff, there was a Judas. I had to make a decision a long time ago that I refused to allow an offense to take a root in my life. Some people say, well, you just don't care. Oh, that's not true at all. I care so much that I refuse to allow somebody to steal my joy, to steal my peace, to steal my victory. I refuse to allow anybody to seed in my life a root of bitterness and anger and wrath and malice that will not only choke me, because if I'm choked, then the people God has called me to will be destroyed too. There's a choice to be made. You see, people, people are amazing because what happens is they get offended. You know, you go to church on a Sunday and all of a sudden, you know, somebody says something you didn't like or the pastor didn't shake your hand. 
tighten it up, I'm going to be miserable. You know, and, and, and so, you know, you're, you're going to church and, you know, you say you love the Lord. Here, give me another one. You know, this, but this is, you know, you might chuckle at this, but this is a lot of Christians who came here today. Each weight is a wound of the past. Mother, father, husband, wife, divorce, children. Every offense is a weight that if you don't deal with, it never shows on the outside, dude. I mean, isn't that the weirdest part? They can smile all they want on the outside. But the truth is, is it's still very real. No one else will see it. But inside your soul... Come on. Watch now. Watch now. You come up to the altar to worship Jesus, and you can't even lift your hands anymore. You've been so offended and wounded, watch, and you refuse to get healed. That Watch now. Now to get to church is hard. Oh, we can blame everybody else. But this has nothing to do with anybody else. I'll put it on my leg. Give me that last. Give me some more. You see, this is, this is so many Christians. You know, we can get as cute as we desire. We can be in ministry. I think I'm going to do an infomercial. <laughs> this is many, this is many that are watching me right now. Don't matter what anybody else looks like. It's a drudgery to get to church now. I want to worship. But I don't feel like worshiping. You know what's amazing about wounds and offense? Is they actually now dictate where you go and what you do. Every one of these things own you. They own your life. How you walk, what you do, where you go, everything you say, the people you talk to, and just think, oh my goodness, I just came into the presence, I just came into the presence of my, of my ex-wife or my ex-husband. Oh, I hate them so much. Give me another weight. How many of you realize that this is really unintelligent? But you know what's amazing to me is that a lot of people know how intelligent it is, unintelligent, but they still, they don't want to get free. We use all our excuses. We have all good reasons. It's not that, it's not you, it's not that they didn't offend you. It's not that they didn't hurt you, meaningful or not meaningful. But the problem isn't the offense. See how winded I am? You ever met somebody like this that's gotten old, miserable? No one wants to be around them? They're lonely by default. And then they get more bitter at people because they're lonely. And all they have to do is start allowing Jesus to heal their heart. Some of you say, well, I don't know why God isn't moving in my life. I do. 
I don't know why I'm not seeing miracles. I do know why. I don't know why God isn't manifesting. You know, when I come to church, sometimes I just, I know why. Because you love these more than you love him. Oh, come on, let me say it one more time. You love these more than you love him. That's crazy. You see, the number one way the enemy has to get you out of the battle is to get you offended and to get you wounded. Because then you won't love yourself. And there's no way you'll love other people. So therefore, you're just going to church. Aren't you sick and tired of just going to church? Don't you want to make a difference? You know what? <laughs> you know what's amazing about this too? Is that They own you. You're owned. And not by Jesus. You're owned by the offense that people have made in your life.